All right. Well, y'all know that I got this mask. And I am now going to uh, start the process of foam filling this. Since I did not mold this and I did not make this, and it's just a blank, I have to improvise with a bucket. And what I want to do is make sure this thing puts and stays in a bucket. So I'm going to put it head first in the bucket where it doesn't expand any further than the width of that bucket. In other words, the size of that bucket hold that head naturally in place. Now what I can also do is put some backing on the back of it to make sure the foam um, doesn't expand out. But what I'm going to do right now is just fold this over like this and make a hole. I'm going to raise that up a little bit from the bottom because if it's on the bottom it gets squashed on the top of the head and I don't want them to have a flat top of the head. So you could do this with latex masks, but uh, as a general rule, I just clip them onto the side of the thing there. All right, so then I got my two measuring cups here. I'm going to set this off to the side right here. Got my A&B foam here, right here. I'm going with Morris Materials Rigid Pour 3-pound polyurethane foam. Two parts, A and B. Um, I got part A, you got part B, you got two measuring cups right here. And what you want to do is, uh, um, like I said, I've got to mix these according to volume. And since this is a big piece, I'm probably going to mix a large batch. I usually do small cups like this or the large cups. But since this is going to be a... Uh, big huge thing I'm just going to put it in and I'm going to do this because the plastic's not going to melt on these cups so I'm going to pour roughly 12 ounces of A in here I've got it measured out about 12 ounces. Like I said, I usually do small batches. But um, you, uh, when you have a large mass like this, if you want to fill a large bus piece, uh, it kind of harkens back to the taxidermy days where you can uh, definitely use larger amounts. trying to figure out if I'm going to do this one way or the other here. That'll work. Alright, because I want this to set. Only problem is, I still have a little problem with this latex when it's heavy. I may end up clipping this. I may end up clipping this to the damn bench. It looks like we got to change the plans here, boys and girls. I'm going to clip this to the bench, and because I got the feeling that if I don't, a large amount of foam that comes out, and that's what I'm going to do, is try to bring you over here and flip you around to where you can see it on the bench. Um, let me unplug it real quick. Whew, all right. Okay, so you got a view of the edge of the bench here, right here, right? All right. Now what I'm going to do is just take some clips. Because I got this thing and I bolt it and I'll just clip it down on the side of the bench. You just standard clamps right here. Okay. And what you want to do is naturally have this thing naturally hang. You don't want to stretch and distort it. Open, like so, and this gives it the, the, the ability to expand out and beyond. So when that fills up, it's going to rise up and expand out and beyond. It's not going to have the restriction of being swollen. It's going to be able to have an outlet to come out. 
So it'll be able to foam and come up and then expand in here. And that's what I want to do is fill all this up. So what I'm going to do is mix up this cup and I've got this other compound here. Let me mix that. And then you want your beef. Oh, God, dog it. i got to get some of this stuff out of the way. Move stuff, make room, move stuff. So I got so much clutter on my bench. All right. So what I'm going to do is I got to mix 12 ounces again of this in here. So. Exactly 12 ounces right there. Get your stir stick. Get these free at the hardware store. When you don't buy paint, you can just run and grab them. So get your stir stick. I'm going to stir this up because this right here is a little bit thicker. So I stir this up to make sure all the lumps and shit are out of it. All right. Then I'm going to pour this into it. That's going to make 24 ounces of this expanding foam. Now you got to move fast with this stuff because it will kick off on you quick. Once that stirs up and gets stirred up, it will kick off. All right, let me set that aside. I got to remember what I put what in because if I have to go back and do it, I have to make sure I get the right amount in the right bucket. Otherwise, it'll kick off while I'm doing it. I'll just stir it up, make a nice, even, creamy mixture. Make sure that gets all good and creamy. You want to mix well. Get down in the sides and everything. Alright. Once you get that mixed up, make sure it's good and creamy. It'll start kicking off so you gotta move fast. Then I'm gonna pour it right down in here. Pour it all the way down in the head, just like that. Now see, since I don't have the mold or uh, the, the mold for this, I have to improvise and make sure I do it a different way. Bring y'all over. See, that's all poured down in there, and it's going to take a few minutes for it to get to the creamy consistency. And it'll start rising up on its own. Of coagulating and doing what it does. If you make dribbles, and so far as a big one like this, don't worry about it if it don't go all the way down the hole. Because it's going to fill up that area anyway. I'm going to put you up on the bench and I'm going to point this down so y'all can see it working. Hopefully it'll catch it. How that work? I don't know if that's going to work or not. Can y'all see that? Try to maybe get this turned around. There we go, a little bit better. Y'all can actually see down in the mass there. No, 
now it's actually kicking off and rising up. That's such a large amount. I don't know how fast or how far that's going to go. Now what I will do is I don't want this to rest on something to get distorted. So I'm kind of holding And I'm letting gravity retain the shape of this mask. And this is going to expand and rise up like this. Now hopefully that was enough to to come up and out where it needs to. But if it doesn't, I just add more foam. I don't know how good y'all seen this. This is not the actually not the best for see that's got expansion right there and it's just expanding and doing what it needs to do. Now I can actually let go of this and hopefully it'll expand up and beyond and out. Right here. Now if I were to try to spread this out it would stop because once you start popping those bubbles it stops the process of the expansion. <clears throat> now, the reason a lot of masks tend to stretch out and distort is because people do not give them the proper uh, room to maneuver and do this with where they can do the expansion. Um, and like I said, this is just mushrooming out all over the place. I let it do it naturally. And just come out. And that was a guesstimate on how much to use for this. That was not a precise formula to follow. That was just a guesstimate. So 12 ounces and 12 ounces is 24. And it seems that it was a good guesstimate. I don't need this to foam up further than 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 than, than the, the uh, other side of it. So I don't want it foaming straight up. I'm gonna let it foam straight up, but I don't need it to foam any further than what it needs to be doing. Because I've got to go in and trim this thing. So what you see here. There's the foam having come up out of the bottom. And you can see here the head's still shaped. Everything's still good. It's not blown out of proportion. It's not too thick. It's still retained its general shape. What it needs to do is it needs to come up no higher than that. But because of the way it's expanding and bubbling, it's going to do that. And you tell it's stopping because it's, it's, it's popping and it's just doing all that. Now what I can do is I can take a stick right here and I will try to spread this out just a wee bit and we'll not stop it and spread it out. Now it's starting to firm, firm up. Well it's a little bit too late to try to spread it out because it's already kicked off and it's starting to harden and solidify. What I will do though is for the areas right here where there is no foam, I will mix a small batch in the cup, in the cup formula right here, and just mix like you know half and half, and pour it in on the sides, and it will expand and stick to this foam, and then I'll have to go back in, shape it down to where it's universal with the lines, the seam line here, and then of course there's going to be some waste. 
It's starting to harden and thicken up. It's still a little sticky. But it's pretty much solid that you can't really do anything with it as far as smooth it out and all that. So, that is the process of this one. Um, I haven't done this large a scale since the taxidermy days where we used to pour uh, forms in foam um, and do that with the deer heads and stuff like that. But, as a general rule, uh, those already have a mold and everything, and a lot of them are pre-made and stuff like that. But there have been a couple of times I've had to make my own forms. And that's where you take an animal's body and you make a casting of like a leg or, or a head or something like that. And uh, you have to make a mold similar as you do with silicone and resin and all that stuff. And then you pour foam in that, and then that makes that uh, that that. that piece that you need. So, as you can see, let me see it. So it's kind of a derpy mask. I mean, it's not that great a piece, but when it's foamed, and if I can work the magic of painting it and doing all that stuff and dremel it, and I'm waiting until I get done with it to dremel it, um, because uh, it will be firm and I'll be able to have a more solid base to work with on this. But uh, once it gets formed and I can paint it and cut it and trim it and doing all that and paint it up and make it look pretty nice. Um, I think I will end up selling this um, unless I can reach out to the person. Because now I found out that Tom Savini does not recognize this as his. So this might be a copy of the dummy that was used. Or it might be a copy of a copy. Or it may be somebody made a copy and then just replicated the copy of the copy. I don't know. I'm still trying to find out the history behind this. Um, I can say this is probably a bad copy of it. Um, and I do know from the research that I've done that, uh, talking to a couple of people, the original puppet that was used in the movie uh, retails probably somewhere around ten to $20,000, if not more, just for it. And I can't say what condition it's in. I don't know. <coughs> I don't know who owns it. I think it's a metal guitarist who owns the original one. I don't know. Um, somebody said mentioned the name. And I reached out to one of my um, convention buddies that runs uh, conventions and asked him, because he's friends with him, could he get back to me on what the history of that was. So, um, this... It's going to be a, 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 it's a big piece. Um, I'm thinking on this and doing research and stuff. If this were to be sold, I would say the piece itself, depending on how good a paint job I do, it's going to run somewhere around $300, $350. Um, I would have to definitely do, if I did it for that much, I could do free shipping and handling. I would eat the shipping and handling on sending it out and um, I already have a box to send it out in it came in this box it's gonna go out in this box um, provided the head can fit enough I think it can but uh, that's just me just off the top of my head just putting it out there I don't know definitively for sure but uh, it's kind of early to say. Um, but it is an unusual one of kind item. Because uh, I don't know if these can be done on a regular. Because I don't know who owns the rights to it. I don't know who owns the molds. Uh, if they're even supposed to be doing this. But that's why I checked with Tom Savini to find out exactly what the history, if he knew of anything behind this. And apparently he denies any knowledge of knowing what the hell it is. 
even though it is clearly a Friday the 13th Part 4 dummy bus. Um, you know. So if the man himself says, I don't know what the hell that is, then it's probably free and clear license for whoever made it to reproduce it and sell it and do all that stuff. So, all right, this is foamed up a bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this cup here. And this was the light stuff that I used right here. This part, the compound. So I'm going to start with this. And I'm going to pour about 8 ounces in here now. Put four of each in there. Four ounces exactly. Right there. Four ounces of A. Four ounces of B. Eight ounces total. And see how much of a difference that is to the original, which was 12 each. Because all I have to do is pour it in the side pockets there. And I take my stir stick, clean this off if I can. I could just use another one. Fuck it, I'll just use another one. Reach down here, grab another stick. They're free from the, uh, in the store. Once again, stir it up. Now, I'm not really paying attention to what you guys are saying to Ale and all you guys that are talking. I appreciate your watching. Um, but uh, I'm not commenting on anything until after I get done. How to showing of thing. All right, now because I've got parts of this that I have to do in proportion on the sides, I'm going to pour this. Sorry about that. I'm going to pour some in one side of it. Let it dribble down the foam there. Then I'm going to come over here to this side. Pour some down in there. Let it get all down in there. And then I got to dribble a little across the front. Just a little bit. Not much. That's the wonderful thing about these big, large, open-ended ones, which are very far, few and far between, um, that you can uh, have a lot of room to maneuver and work with and pour and foam. Trying to scrape this out. Because I like to try to use these cups as much as I can. They're not that expensive, but I don't really like going to Walmart and going to Reynolds Advanced Materials every week if I, if I do this on a regular. I'm not down there as much as I used to because I started buying bulk. The only thing I got to go back in and get is latex now. So. And you see I poured a little bit of foam down there on the sides. Right around here on the front and on this side here. It's going to rise up. 
And like I said, it's already at the point pretty much where it needs to be. Right there. Now the one thing I will do is make an adjustment on this side for something here. Right here. Take that out just a wee bit further because I want that to be naturally formed in the shoulder. So I can give it just a wee bit of friction on that side and lower it right down here and reclamp it there. That just stretches out the outside so it's got a little bit more of a continuity uh, form to it. Shit. This is already starting to be heavy. Go. Let's stretch it out and hopefully all that will expand in there and kind of do that and then I can go back in there and shape it. And I'll do that with like a rasp or a saw or something like that and just go in there and just cut it and, and, and you know because this big chunk here in the middle is all formed out. That's pretty much it for the foam filling part. Once I get that done, then I'm going to have to put it out on the table. And we'll probably move to either take this down, put it up here, or move somewhere it out because it's such a large piece. That's the same thing I've got with the pumpkin head. When I get around to doing it, that I've got to make sure I've got enough room for a big piece. Because thus far, that's been the biggest piece that I have to do outside of this one and I'm not trying to make it a habit to even get these in as a regular but if people want them done and I can do it and I've got the materials and supplies I will do it so this will set and I will let this do its thing and set up and come back out Dribble in foam wherever it's needed, like a little pocket back here that might not get filled. But all this sticks to itself, and then I can just shape it out, make it nice and smooth. Um, and then we'll just see what happens with that. And then I've still got to get this. Oh, this is for Reuben. Reuben, I've got this on the bench here. It's going to start, I'm going to start painting this right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. But y'all have seen me do that 500 times, so you don't need to see that anyway that's the process for the large foaming of this thing um, I'm gonna let this sit and take it shape and do what it needs to do and there again it's all natural see it's it's solid now doesn't take long for it to do it so Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. And I'm going to go in and ask your questions now.